Liz McDonald, it's Ashley Webster, it's Jeff Seeker and David Barnson. I'm going to start with the jobs report. Jeff Seeker, I say it was a strong report. What say you? Excellent report. And the main reason why it was excellent is the focus was on, on, on wage growth. Wage growth was strong. Now investors have to start asking the question, how does this affect okay. interest rate policy? But, but is, it was great. Is this market up right now in part because of a strong jobs report? Absolutely. It and is. I think it's going to continue to move up on it. The tariff announcement that took stocks lower yesterday. David Barnson, what do you make of this trade dispute that's heating up? Uh, listen, I, I don't think that the president has too many people that are bigger defenders of his tax policy and deregulation than I am. I'm a, a free market conservative who loves what he's doing in so many aspects of the economy. And this trade area is just the one thing I have to take exception to. Mm. This particular one is particularly bad. But why isn't it a factor on the market this well, morning? Well, why, it, wouldn't we be, it wouldn't be a factor on the broader market for this reason. Because, first of all, the market priced a lot of tariff volatility rather exhaustively for three months. We had three months of it adding skittishness and vol to the market. So volatility is there. But at this point, I think the market has learned that the president is negotiating and talking and bantering. He changes his yeah. mind. They can't go price in a full trade war because they have every reason to believe a full trade war won't happen. It's a moving target. It's you a moving target. Around that, that's not yeah. good for markets, but it is why the market doesn't go straight down from that point. We're staged for a bull run. Here's why. Uh, the jobs report is uh, so positive um, in, a, in a variety of ways. It's coming in before the tax cuts take full effect. Okay. Uh, there's a shrinking pool of available workers uh, for businesses to hire. That's causing wages to go up. As wages go up, consumer spending goes up and the economy goes up. You could see 4% growth. Whoa, go. I think the most impressive thing is you look at where the jobs are going. It's broad-based. It's not one industry that's dragging everyone else along. Manufacturing, uh, goods producers, uh, healthcare, you name it. Retail even. What yeah. I say, up 31,000. It it's broad-based, and that's very good. Let's get back to this growth in the economy in the current quarter. I see a lot of economists on Wall Street raising their forecast. They're saying, some of them are saying that between April and June, the current second quarter, we, ra we grow at a 4% annualized rate. Seeker, are you going to pour <laughs> cold water on this? First of all, have I become the guy that pours cold water? <laughs> yes. I don't want to be that guy. But the truth is, yes, but. we are. I believe we're going to get the 4% growth. Oh. I think it's pretty obvious we're going to get it. I think, I, I think the, mark, the tax cuts have been a good, good part of it. But we also have to look at some of the concerns in the horizon with some of this geopolitical tension that we're dealing with, which could affect growth. All right. It is Friday morning, four minutes into the trading session. We're off, we're running, and we are up now close to 200 points. Please remember, we were down 250 yesterday. We're back up 188 as of right now. A couple of individual stocks. Here we go. Costco, price cuts and freight costs hitting its bottom line. It did announce, though, that it's going to raise its starting wage to $14 an hour. Not much of a reaction on the market. It's down about 1%. Ulta Beauty. Sales lukewarm compared to this time last year. That's not good enough. We're down 3% on Ulta Salon. Abercrombie & Fitch. Better sales. That's good news. But the stock is down 7%. What happened? Look at Microsoft. Uh, truly in record territory, 99.48. So here's my question to Barnson. Here's whether he decides whether he stays on the show or leaves forever. <laughs> which company will be the first to acquire a value of a trillion dollars? Microsoft, which has to go to 130, or Apple, which has to go to 203? Um, I actually think it will be Microsoft, and the reason for that is this cloud investment. I think that they have a, a more coiled-up lever that will add to market capitalization, whereas in Apple, the ability to move the needle in their market cap is still, at the end of the day, so restricted to the phone device we all hold on to. So I think Microsoft has just diversified their revenue base substantially. Oh, uh, David, you're all right. <laughs> do, do I get to stay? Yeah, you stay, man. In fact, I, you can anchor the show for next yeah, well, week. Well, I'll, I'll <laughs> talk about GDP next. <laughs> You just couldn't take the pay cuts. Yeah, That's right. Well. That's right. Okay. Uh, look at ne 
<laughs> Look at Netflix, uh, near a record high, a couple of points away from a record high. Uh, three hundred fifty three ninety five on Netflix. Too expensive for you, Jeff? Well, I, I've never poured water on Netflix, I think, at this point. They are the king of contact, they, content. They are the most valuable media company in the world yeah. right now. But I would say, yes, it's too expensive. They're going to continue to, to execute on streaming. They're going to continue to grow their subscriber base. But keep in mind, you have Disney, who's going to go full speed into, into streaming. They're going to have competition, and they're going to have to keep up with that competition. It's costing them more money for content than it ever has. But as I've said about Netflix before, Netflix, is they are innovators, and they will figure out how to do this. But for now, it is at an interim high. I wouldn't touch the stock. Okay. It's nice. The stock is trading at its P.E. ratio. 350 bucks a share is yeah. what its uh, P.E. is. Ain't that something? Ain't yeah. that something? <laughs> no worries. Uh, top line of your screen, left-hand side, Amazon, 1640, up $11 today. That's another all-time high. What stops them? I mean, they just this is, I think, three or four days running they've hit an all-time high. What stops them, David? Well, this one is cheap compared to Netflix. This is only 207 times earnings, so it's a significantly cheaper. But what stops high prices is high prices, which, of course, is usually what stops low prices, too. It gets low enough, it has to reverse. I, this is a momentum play. It's not what we do. I would never dare call a top on Amazon because anyone who has is left in tears. But there's no way I'd buy at this valuation. Uh, well, I'll also mean. say about Amazon. Amazon has to invest a lot of money in the coming year in fulfillment centers. They have to build more fulfillment centers. That will cost them money. Jeff Bezos will begin to talk about that. That will have an effect. But outside of that, there's nothing that's going to stop Amazon except an overall market event.